Mini Matters, a miniature and painting podcast. Hi guys, thanks for clicking on this video and joining us in this top 10. This week we're looking at our top 10 artists of last year. I'm once again joined by Rafa, better known as Volumir in the, in the community. In order to make our selection, we've taken a number of criteria into account. Not only have we looked at the most obvious, such as the quality of paint, but we also looked at how productive an artist has been and whether they've made an impact in 2020. We've also recognised personal growth and given credit for that as well. So with that in mind, let's get started. Kicking us off at number 10, we have David Corwell. David Corwell first popped up on my radar in 2019 as an emerging artist of note with his unique take on Space Marines. However, 2020 was a year that cemented him as one of the top artists. From his first wave box art to Ignis art, he has displayed range and quality in all of his pieces. Our number nine is Joshua Lai. We want to highlight his small dioramas that he makes with tiny models, sometimes even smaller than a fingertip, but filled with amazing color and storytelling. His style is very personal and unique, and I would say very difficult to imitate. And he normally picks topics that are out of the box. He loves nature, as you will see in most of his work. At number eight, we have Roman Lepat. There are many things you can do to emulate artists' work in this industry, but I don't think the same can be said of Roman's work. He is a true artist and has an eye for storytelling. You either have this or you don't. In a sea of artists who produce well-painted models, Roman offers emotions, escapism and narrative. From his numerous astronaut dioramas to Australian koalas, a commentary on bushfires, his work deserves attention. Number seven is Natalia Orac. She was relatively unknown to the painting community just a, a year ago or so. But this past year, she has made a name for herself in the, in the community with her amazing, delicate painting of, of busts, with great choices of color and in incredible use of contrast. Uh, I would say that most of her works were among our favorites for the year 2020. At number six, we have Rodrigo Rotacor. This is another rising star in my books, and 2020 was a year that he emerged as one of my favorite artists. From his detailed work on war game miniatures to his box arts for busts, he demonstrates both versatility and style. David Arroba is our number five. He's been growing professionally in the past few years, but I would say that this year, 2020, he has, it has been his confirmation year. He's now one of the top miniature painters, uh, professionally speaking. And we are very excited to see what comes next for David. At number four, we have Michael Posarski. Michael's work is breathtaking. With his flawless execution and unbelievable realistic rendering of both metals and skin, I still struggle to comprehend how he achieves the results he does. Mark Masclans is our number three. He is a solid professional miniature painter and the go-to name for most of the miniature companies in the world. His style is unique and very recognizable and this year I think his painting has exploded with experimentation and new ways to find brush strokes. At number two, we have Arno Lazaro. This artist is simply ridiculous when it comes to productivity, producing at least 20 major pieces by my count in 2020. You could be forgiven for expecting a drop in quality given the sheer number of pieces produced. However, this is not the case. Each piece is beautifully painted, with one of the pieces being our favourite from last year. And our top painter for the year is truly a no-brainer, Kirill Kanaev. If there is a master among the masters of miniature painting, that is Kirill. He has an understanding of texture and material that is unparalleled. And he's been popping out groundbreaking paint jobs as if they were Pringles out of the box. I think the paint jobs from Kirill speak from themselves. There you have it guys, they're our top picks of last year. Let us know in the comments below which ones you agree with and which ones you would suggest for yourself. Once again, if you want to follow these artists' work, I'm going to put links to their social medias in the description down below. 
I hope you'll come back and join us in our next top 10 when we look at our favourite sculpts of last year. Until then, take care and I hope to see you in the next video.